<laughs> episode one, no, 203, no, 202, 200, 201, 202, 202, 202, dude, we're coming back to back to back, bangers, we had Jake Paul, we had Ariel Helwani, we're having Mike Perry, he's 2% African American, yeah, I'm Timothy Allen Welch, ladies and gentlemen, it's oh, Sunday shit, morning, welcome to TMS News, I'm Sean Daniel O'Malley here with Timothy Allen Welch, properties in Arizona are skyrocketing, um, yeah, dude, I fucking ate a little bit too much ice cream last night. Is this macadamia nut shit and then this uh, this uh, coconut milk ice cream? Hammered it. That organic weed makes you munchy. I woke up trying to talk myself out of this fucking run, dude. Really? But I'm not going to let weed control my fucking life. And I had that conversation in, in bed this morning. With yourself? It was talking on that Modern Wisdom podcast, too, about how like you need to have have a separation between your emotions your emotions can't decide your mm. day and shit i'm like damn because that's for most people well that's that's where meditation that's the skill meditation is a skill to be able to do that to separate those emotions right yeah would you, would you agree i would agree but maybe it's i don't know if it's just not being a bitch i mean because i those, think that comes down to it mm, okay yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 we have a very special guest this evening a fellow named michael perry should we give him a, a middle name? Michael Timothy Perry, MTP. Yeah, I think Mike Perry's real name is real, real name. Michael Venom Page. Mm -hmm. That's what they call him. Michael Venom Perry. Oh, what else we got going on? Did you watch uh, Mighty Mouse on Friday? Dude, I did. I, I randomly, it was so weird, dude. It was on Amazon Prime. I was like, fuck Netflix. I can't find anything. I'm going to throw on. I'm going to check out Amazon Prime. I click it, and it's like 1FC Live. It was the co-main event, that uh, Muay Thai match. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I want to watch Demetrius. Demetrius is so fucking good. He's it's, just good about making shit exciting, too. I wish he was in the UFC right now. Watching him against Davison or Moreno or Kai Kara France would be yeah. sick. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was very impressive. I mean, the first round he kind of he got controlled on the ground, lost. Second round, same thing, controlled on the ground, lost. Didn't you know? Stayed focused, stayed mentally just in the game. Third round, kind of put started putting it on the guy. Guy started getting tired. Fourth round, that Adriano Moraes guy. How good is he? He's sick. He's, how much he's different huge. is fighting when you can knee people in the head on the ground? It is a different sport. Side control, half guard. Front headlocks, just getting up off the ground, off the fence. Like, the whole sport is so much different when you can knee people in the head. It's scary. It, dude, it really is a fucking different rule set. The front headlock changes a lot because you can oh, hold God. someone in front headlock for a while and just fucking yeah. knee their noggin. Oh, God. Ah. Uh, are we using your laptop for m oh, mic? Pr probably we nine minutes, a, so I just want to Probably use sure. Jax's. Um, yeah, that's shit scary, dude. For you got to sure. watch the Mante Teo, you know, the people who made that documentary. Yeah. They made like four or five other ones. The and untold stories. Yeah. They're I good watched, as did fuck. Did you watch the boxing one? No. The girl boxing one? Eh. Was, good. It, was it good? Yeah. It I watched the good. tennis one and that the one was really good is the hockey one. Is it? Where this guy, with this dad, this like mobster, mobster dad oh, buys yeah. his 17 year old son yep, yep, a hockey yep. team. I did watch that. I did that watch one was that. fucking We watched good. that a long time ago. I did watch that. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. What I forget a little bit. We remember watching that one, Danny? The hot, where the guy bought his son a hockey team. We oh, my watched God. Look at Elena how big she's getting. Elena, you're huge. She, like, talks and shit. <gasps> Look who it is. Look who it is, Lenita, mi amor. Raya. Oh, yeah. Should be good. <laughs> um, did we upgrade from Zoom? Yeah. Okay, fire. Uh, yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah, going to have a great podcast. Okay. Uh, sparring. Pretty much, it's nice. I'm eight weeks out from the fight. Yesterday, obviously, this drop is today, Sunday, and then just drops Monday. Eight weeks out from Saturday, last Saturday. Uh, probably the best shape I've ever started camp in. Because really, we started camp four weeks ago. I just wasn't sparring. So, really, this was kind of the first week camp. It went great. Phenomenal shape for eight weeks yeah, out. Yeah. I've never sparred this far out. Um, yeah, it's fucking sweet. I'm pumped about it. Yeah, it's so, nice uh, being this. Uh, I was watching this. Uh, the, it was a Russian interview with Habib, but they had captions, and I was listening to it. And they were talking about just like how Charles and how dangerous his guillotine is, yep. and how his body's just made for the guillotine, yep. and how they're preparing for it. And Islam walks around in great shape at 178 pounds. Um, it's a, actually a really good interview listening to him talk. And he was talking about how all of Usman's fights, like slowly, he's getting worse. And they were slowly getting worse and worse. Um, I don't think that's true. I mean, he knocked out Jorge Masvidal a couple fights. Yeah, ago. but he's saying the thirty-seven, like 
37 years old. How old is Usman? I think 37 sounds right. I mean, oh, wait, is he? It's just I'll like it up. your body just starts to deteriorate. It's fucking science. You start to slow down. Your Dude, reaction but the, starts slow. the thing is, is he won that fight. Except for the, obviously got knocked out the last 50 yeah. seconds. So he goes and wins that fight. Like, holy cow. He's he 37 year old. Yeah, no, that's the true. best as well. The literally, I, I just disagree with that. He's yeah. 35. 35, yeah. I don't think he looks like he slowed down. He was winning that fight, and and he got caught and got knocked out. Doesn't make. I don't think that means he's, um, yeah, getting worse. He can go out there and beat Leon. Then what? It's like, wow, he's imp- he's getting better at thirty six. Yeah, for sure. Those Russians are. They eat that shit that I ate on fucking Friday. No wonder they're pissed off all the time. That shit sucked. What was it? Hair, heirloom over a fucking hair cock a under a fucking pile of shit. Yeah, he doesn't even let. Uh, Habib doesn't even let uh, like gambling sponsors sponsor his promotion. They've wanted to, and he says no because I don't want to promote that. That's like promoting alcohol and and drugs and stuff. It's like, per- damn, that's, that's pretty Im- cool. It's impressive. It's impressive, man. Yeah, uh, I also was listening to another podcast. That was an interesting thing. It was talking about like the pleasure you get, like dopamine spikes. Mm. Um, that uh, from like putting effort into something and the dopamine spikes you get from that. Those are the type of dopamine spikes you should look for compared to buying shit and doing all that other shit. The dopamine spikes you get from pushing yourself and making yourself uncomfortable. What about getting strange though? You get a dopamine spike and you had to put, you had to fucking you'd be nervous for that. Is that the same? Or? I would say so. I mean, I would say those so. are nerve wracking. Strange, getting strange for the first couple of times. Yeah. So Mike Perry, what kind of shit we're going to ask him? Oh, I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'll ask him never. No, I want to do it. His, I want to ask him who, who like, who he was most nervous to fight. Cause I'm looking at his sure dog right here, dude. This motherfucker. I'm just gonna run it down before he gets here, cause he probably already knows. Alan Jobon, Jobin, Jobin, uh, Jake Ellenberger, Santiago Ponzinibbio, Max Griffin, Paul Felder, Donald Cerrone, Alex Oliveira, uh, Vincent Luque, Jeff Neal, Mickey Gall, Tim Means, Daniel Rodriguez. He's fought a lot of. Those are that was in a row. Like yeah. he's fought good guys he didn't have an easy path like some of those guys um weren't aren't big names but like max griffin's good santiago ponzanibia doesn't have a big name he's good as fuck yeah that dude i mean you look at mike perry the fucker's built for fighting yeah literally yeah wonder if he's uh booed up or if he's been getting some strange i know he doesn't he live out in florida yeah He's got to be getting some strange on the side once in a while. You got to. Well, I love it on the juice. YouTube comments when we ever even talk about this shit that people are just like, you. La, 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 la. It's like, yeah, dude, <laughs> you never have the opportunity to ever get pussy. So it's easy for you to say. The thing is, if, if you're not, if you don't have the opportunity to get chicks and you can, if you have one chick and you're just kind of ugly and you scored a good, a girl and you're like, no, I wouldn't do that. It's probably because you're ugly, dude. Yeah. Am I right? No, it, it I'm not right. Be. I'm not right. I'm wrong. Did you I'm guys right. watch that uh, Andrew Tate video he put out? Oh no, I didn't. I seen it. was I, like an hour long. On uh, I seen that he's doing like a live um, breaking new, or uh, emergency whatever he called it. Yeah, was it know. good? He, he was just breaking it down, like trying to clear his name. I think I felt like he was trying to apologize to Instagram and Twitter to get his stuff back because he's saying if I get it back, I'm just gonna be like a non profit organization. That's all I'll post. I'll, I'll stop posting that. I feel like it was like a long apology, Damn. but it was. Did you see the clearing his name? Did you see the video that 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 came out that where he was abusing the girl? Like yeah, but the girl came out and she said that there was just like sex. their thing. Yeah, yeah they kinky. were just fucking around. I yeah. mean, you could kind of see it clearly in that video. That's stupid. Are you dumb? Uh, Dude, you know who? I watched porn the other day for the first time in a long time. Uh, you watch. see the girl that was in Mike uh, Male X. Um, Video, Sky Bree. Yeah, oh. she has some pornies. Yeah, she. I think. She, I guess she does OnlyFans. I just looked it up on a little porny Pornhub. Really good. What kind of shit? Just fantastic titties and her eyes, and she's just nice little puss. Or she's yeah, she's. Uh, she said. I think she said she likes sucking off guys in the bathroom when at, at parties and they're not enjoying themselves and they're just chilling on the couch. And what? She's like to go and grab them and take them in the back. Dude, she is. Bad the bone issues from childhood or just horned no, up. Just a good girl. Just, Seriously, huh? Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you ever get bored, Sky Bree, look her up. Uh, I'm uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I want to ask Mike Perry about his two percent African. I, I really, it's interesting. I wonder if he gets offended if white people say it. You know, being an African American himself, I wonder yeah. if he gets offended if guys like you say it. Yeah, I don't really like saying it. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. 
I didn't mean like you. I just meant like white guys, mm-hmm. like yourself and JX. Yeah. So that should be good. That should be good. Should I just click start and then you can come in one of them? Yeah, I think that's what we did last time. What Ariel? Uh, uh, hey, did you see this uh, Britney Spears post here? Oh. Computer audio. What the fuck? Why are we in? Yeah. A, why are we on the? <laughs> the San Francisco Wait, background. Can we change that? Or oh she... yeah, I was fucking around. I like it. <laughs> you like that shit? <laughs> I was just testing the features. Oh god, should we keep it or what? Yeah, you could change it. Sorry about that, lady. What the gentlemen. fuck? We look like we're fucking about to jump off gentlemen. this fucking bridge. What do I go to? Fuck, you look healthy. What kind of drugs you been fucking with these days? Just weed and coffee, or, or yeah. what? Yeah, coffee and some weed. What the Any f- pain pills once in a while? Uh, no. Those get fucking tricky, don't they? I guess they can. I don't really fuck with them too much. Yeah, fuck me neither. I don't like how they make you constipated. <laughs> I mean, I, I took Percocets a while ago, and those were pretty good, but I can't seem to get none. So <laughs> maybe it's for the best. Fuck yeah. Dude, yeah, congratulations on your fight. I know that was a couple, like two weekends ago or whatever, but that was fucking, God, that bare knuckle shit, dude. I just, I, I watch that shit and I'm just, my eyes are half closed. You crazy motherfuckers can do that shit, dude. dude. Is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it a different feeling going into that fight compared to going into a UFC fight? Is it, or is it pretty similar? Um, I feel like it's pretty easy. It is. You know, like, you don't got, I don't know, you don't get, I like wearing shoes, I like the box, right. and I, I have cool outfits from SMF, which are actually out there in Cali, Uh, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge, yeah. but I think that's a Cali bridge. There we, there we go. go, fuck, fuck that, that. Um, bridge. So, SMF uh, makes me some cool fits, and yeah. then, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, you know, going out, a fight is a fight, you know what I mean? So... Who knows? I might come back to the the UFC after my next bare knuckle fight because people are talking about it. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely making waves and getting your name out there. The Jake Paul call out was fucking that. that I want to see that fight. Jake Paul versus Mike Perry. That's a big fucking fight. That's a good fight for for both of you guys. I think it makes sense. I think uh, has there been any talks on his team or with his team and your team or or how's where's that at? Not as far as him fighting me. Um, and it makes sense because in all reality, I'm a pro fighter with like, you know, almost 30 professional fights. So he's, he's not really up to par with me yet. Right. He's done well. And his, uh, as the marketing standpoint goes, you know, he's doing his thing. So, but I got maybe too many fights. Uh, they don't want to test themselves against you know, someone that they can't beat. You can't fucking beat me when you're in the ring with me. So, yeah, 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 absolutely. It was, I thought it was interesting too. You're telling Ariel you were punching different in, going into that one because you had learned from your other uh, bare knuckle fight. Fuck, dude, I just can't imagine punching. You said you don't you don't wrap your knuckles. You just wrap your wrist. Two inches behind the. Knuckles. Yeah, you pretty much just wrap around, and Fuck. like you can put the the, the pack- wrap up close to the knuckle, but. It usually works its way down through the fight anyways. Fuck, dude. I can't imagine just clocking someone like that. What's you got to practice it, I guess. You get, you really got to like turn it over and get to the tip of the knuckle and make sure it doesn't hurt you. you try to be fucking accurate, not hit the top of their head, huh? What's your what's your favorite uh, yeah. rule set, Mikey? That triad combat? Did you like that rule set? A little dirty boxing? That was cool. You know, last night I was at... Uh, combat karate and i got to see raymond daniels he's pretty he's pretty slick man but they posted a video after the fight because they're in this pit and the guys can like run on the pit and the the karate guys it was like a lot of older karate guys that you could tell they've been doing disciplined martial arts for years they were all really respectful and like you know, they were ripped. They were fucking shredded. Like, they worked so hard and been in such good shape for the fight. And then Raymond Daniels, he's fighting this young karate guy. And you're looking at the guy and you're like, damn, I don't know because Daniels is old. This young guy might get him. And then they start. And you can tell with his experience in the ring, he was just way too fast on a fake. And, like, 
Then he knocks the guy over and he tries to do his little 540 spin to like a leg kick while the guy's on the ground. And there's a video, I'll send it to you, Sean, on the goat shed posted it. As he spins, he hits his neck oh, on shit. that fucking pit and he's getting up from the ground. He like looks over at the camera. He's like, fuck, dude, my neck. And he almost knocked himself out doing that shit. <laughs> That's funny. Raymond Daniels, yeah, we've watched a lot of his highlights and shit. I love his... God, he can, when you can spin that fast, it's fucking scary to fight someone that can spin that fast. You don't know where the fuck it's going to your body or your head, or they start fucking doing some weird shit. But yeah, I bet that was fucking interesting. They, they threw some hard kicks to like the arms and the bodies. And they, you know, punch, kick, punch. And, and you get five seconds of ground and pound. The guy starts counting it down when they fall mm -hmm. over. He's like, five, four. And the guy, like, runs around him. And he starts, like, punching him in the face as many <laughs> times as he can on the ground. And then they get up. It was pretty cool to watch. GSP was there. So Damn. Damn. That, was that was out in Florida? Florida? Yeah, that was in Universal Studios. Oh, so shit. it was, like, one of the, I don't know. It was one of the attractions. It was pretty cool. Do you miss – so are you still grappling? Are you still wrestling, training that shit? Or are you kind of focusing more on boxing? Or, or what do you, what's your training routines like right, right now? now? Uh, sometimes I go to the MMA gym and I uh, spar with some of the guys because a lot of the guys that you'll see in, in bare knuckle are come from that background. So they have a lot of unorthodox striking styles. It's not like a boxer versus boxer. Right. where they're going to be really technical. They're going to fight you in the pocket, things like that. They're going to do weird stuff. So I'll go to the MMA gym and try to work with guys. And I tell myself, as someone who trains boxing so consistently now, I should be able to, you know, just pick these guys apart. And when I'm in my zone and I'm feeling myself, these guys, you know, I'll hit them to the point where they start shooting takedowns or throwing kicks at me. And I just take the extra credit, you know what I mean? I'll stuff a takedown or, like, I, I still get a little extra work. Sometimes I've grappled, like, once or twice since I started boxing, but I don't I don't like to grapple too much. Really? I'm still pretty good, though. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you're grappling super underrated. I think it was the was the Mickey Gal fight where you were just out grappling him, and I was like, damn, that was super fucking impressive. Thanks, man. I mean, I work with a lot of really high-level Grapplers, uh, Rodolfo Vieira, Jacare Souza, Leota Machida. Um, there's a lot of really good grapplers at our gyms in Florida. And, um, but, you know, I just like to punch really hard. And I think that that, that kind of changes it when, when these grapp and, and another thing is like with grappling is the wrestling. I'm missing a little bit of the wrestling where you can get it to the ground. Right. right. And I've struggled in fights where I like I'm holding a guy's position or I got him up against the fence, but I just can't finish that takedown. And that that's frustrating. Fuck yeah. How many fights left you got on your BKFC contract? I got one more on BKFC. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of interested in maybe if I fought because they've talked about it, but to fight like uh, MVP again, but in in MMA. Damn. Damn. In, in, in for, bare, for bare knuckle. What's that? For, for but like like no no, but in MMA like after oh, okay. I do one more. We'll see what bare knuckle offers me yeah. if I do one more fight with them. Um, my managers has some ideas about places that I might go. Uh, so it might be back to MMA. I bet, I bet it, feels it feels good at being feeling a little bit more free, kind of. I know with the UFC, like once you're signed, it's like you're kind of locked in for even if you have one fight, feel like you're kind of locked in. But I bet it feels kind of nice being free and testing out all these other uh, organizations and and having conversations with everyone. I bet that's nice. Yeah, these guys kind of allow that. Uh, there's some bare knuckle fighters who fight in many different organizations throughout their bare knuckle career like they'll fight uh bellator and then come back to bkfc and then they'll fight another mma league i think they're messing themselves up with that yeah because i stay strict in the boxing right now so it's making me strong boxer and then if, when i go back to mma like i'm gonna have to i mean i really want to stick with the as much boxing as i'm doing because i think it really breaks down these mma guys but the difference would be 
The kicks are a problem when you do a lot of boxing. You can get kicked in the face and stuff. And then, you know, I mean, I still got that grappling in my back pocket. Yeah. yeah. Who's uh who's the most nervous you've ever been to fight? In your whole career, who's the most nervous you're like, fuck, I'm nervous for this fight? Cause you fought some motherfuckers. I was looking at your sure dog and I was like, Jesus Christ, you fought a lot of back to back to back to back fucking good ass guys. Mm -hmm. Man, I feel like, um, you know, I don't like to make excuses, but it's like times that I got beat, I feel like I knew I was going to get beat before I got in there. And I still, you know, I still choose to get in there. And just like, like fighting with an injury or what? Or fighting just with a, having a shitty camp or or just or mentally just not there? Maybe it was mentally. It was like some things were off and... Um, now I've really taken control of my camps and I make sure that I get the rest that I need rather than I'm fucking training so much every fucking day trying to push myself and my coaches are asking for more and more and more. And I'm like, you guys are the fucking scaredy cats. You're yeah. fucking scared and you want me to do all this shit. And then when I get in the ring, I'm gassed out. Dude, Dude, yeah, yeah. I think over. For, for me, I remember Jason Perlow said it takes confidence to take a day off. I think the best thing I ever did was kind of just controlling my own fight camps and taking the days off and not overtraining. I feel like that's the number one thing these fighters go into fights overtrained rather than undertrained. How much did how much did having a baby help you get dialed in? How much did who help me? No, how much did, now that you have a baby, how much did that help you kind of dial in? Because, dude, we've been to Florida, and we know how much hot puss is running around. It's a fucking dangerous place, brother. <laughs> um, You know, the thing, yeah, man, having a baby, I know you got you got a yeah, cute yeah. little daughter, Sean. Yeah, um, yeah, my son, and I mean... You know, that kind of goes with the rest thing. I'm like, well, looks like I got to stay home and watch Little Dude and we're going to cuddle and watch cartoons and I can just relax all day yeah. and no one can tell me shit because I'm taking care of my son. <laughs> so, you know, um, he just he kind of makes me feel like I make sure that when I do get to the gym or when I do put in work, my body is fully prepared, healed, fed up, and I'm ready to like fucking explode as hard as i can as long as i can and then when i get back home i'm fucking crippled for a day and a half because i go so hard yeah for for dude like tim said we've been to florida me personally i don't know if i could live there and and train and stay disciplined because i live in peoria arizona it's kind of like where older people live and it's it's low paced low chilled out because dude I don't know if I could live out there with all the opportunities, the chicks and stuff. Is that ever an issue or you kind of got it dialed in to where you're, you're not really into that scene or, or do you have like a main boo that you, you're, you're, you're loyal to or, or what's, what's the relationship shit looking like? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much married over here. I got um, my baby mama and uh, you know, I take care of the family over here, but I definitely, you know, with all my hard work and stuff, every now and then we'll get in a fight and I will just <laughs> leave and go to downtown Orlando and get drunk as fuck everywhere. I, you know, I just like to bar hop in downtown Orlando and see all the people who show me love and yeah, yeah. fucking get drunk. Dude, Mom, you want a shot? You want a shot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah bro, let's go. Dude, after, we got we to gotta party together one of these times. I feel like that would be fucking super fun. But yeah, I, I feel that. Every once in a while, I need to get some strange, like, it's just in my DNA, I think. I just, I gotta, I gotta explore. Yeah. Hey, when you're, when you're, uh, when you're getting ready for, like, Michael Venom Page and stuff, how many times you spar in a week, and are you just sparring with 16-ounce gloves, normal boxing sparring, or what's your training look like? Yeah, I spar with 16s, um, because when we go to the boxing gym, man, we try to knock each other out, you know, we're swinging, <laughs> um, actually, the last week. The last couple weeks for the Michael Venom Page camp, I was actually kind of um, sparring. Car sparring partners seemed to come out of nowhere. It, uh, is my coach doing his job and bringing someone in? Um, so it was like once a week I was getting some good sparring for the Michael Venom Page camp, and I did it for like three weeks in a row. And the last week was two young guys who like 
who are really young, like 18, 19, but they've been at the boxing gym for a couple years um, with, and they've been working with me for like a year. So they knew when they got in the ring with me, they couldn't give me shit. They kept their guard up. They ran away from me as fast as they could. They hit me with sharp jabs and then moved right after. They were on point and they gave me the best. And I did, you know, I did uh, six, eight rounds or whatever. And it was three with a fresh guy and then three with a fresh guy. And they were sharp and on point and they had me ready to fight uh, Venom Page's slippery style. Fuck yeah, that's sweet. Yeah, fuck yeah. You looked phenomenal, dude. Who's who's one motherfucker? I appreciate that, you guys, man. Yes, sir. Who's one motherfucker that you wouldn't want to fight right now? Where you're just like, nah, he's too much of a motherfucker. Like bare knuckle or what? It, MMA or bare knuckle. Ah, oh, man. Mike Perry. I guess it'd have to be Francis Ngannou. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. What would you think about? And I haven't seen John at heavyweight though. John Jones at heavyweight. He probably I saw him hit those mitts bare knuckle. I was like, damn, that looks like it'll fucking hurt. But I still kind of like I'm interested. But Francis just seems like he could hit me with his arm, and I would get fucked up. Fucking, he could flick you. Flick it. Well, who do you got, Nate Diaz or Chimaev? Ooh. Oh man. The way that everybody's making it sound is like Nate actually has a chance because he's got absolutely nothing to lose <laughs> but Chamayev's probably gonna smash him as Chamayev's I mean I don't see a strategy working for Nate it, it's I don't Nate know. Nate's strategy of pretty much his whole career is kind of like people get tired beating him up and then he comes back I mean he almost finished fucking Leon in the fifth so dude I I would. It love didn't it. work well with Masvidal. No, that didn't fucking work at all with Masvidal. I would love to see Nate kind of get pounded on. Not you know, I would love to see Nate get a finish in the fourth or fifth over Chimaev. Do I think it's gonna happen? Probably not. But fuck, that would be sick. Yeah. Did, did, yeah. No, did, it's not. Did you watch uh, Demetrius Johnson's one FC uh, fight the other night or his rematch? I saw the highlight. And I mean, wow, man, very impressive. He made sure that guy ate his knee up against the fence, man. Yeah, that was dude, that rule set. When you have when you can knee people in the head on the ground, it changes the front headlock, half guard, side control, just changes every position on the ground. It's such a fucking different sport. I don't even know like if UFC had announced that we were doing those rules, I'd be like, fuck, I don't even know if I really like that. Get soccer fucking kicked in the head on the ground. I grew up training pride. Really? I grew up training pride rules and like I even had a fight in the Bahamas, a pro fight where we were allowed to do face stomps and soccer kicks, but I didn't get it off. I knocked the guy out with my hands and just kind of followed up. <laughs> Damn. Are you a, are you usually a wake and bake guy or do you smoke all day or do you just kind of treat yourself at the end of the day with a good smoke sesh? Um, I think I'm, I've turned into a end of the day guy. Yeah. Um, because I have shit that I got to do and I can't be too high, but it depends on my mood. If we're just, you know, if I wake up and me and my girl both wake up on the wrong side of the bed, I'll just go chill out, <laughs> smoke a doobie and yeah. fucking, you know, just I'm poised after that. One of my favorite videos I think I've seen recently is when you're, uh, on, uh, Instagram live with Tyrone Woodley and you said... <laughs> You're, you're, you're officially, I, th I think you got your, your test that you're 2% African American. Do you uh, get offended if a white guy like Tim says it, being an African American like yourself? I can't tell nobody else what to say or what not to say if they want to say it. If they want to come up to me and say it disrespectfully, yeah, yeah, different. Different. it's different. Yeah. But if you want to say, I mean, if you want to put yourself in danger, Oh man, I got another video I gotta send you. There's this, there was this white guy, this dude. You know these kids be doing these interviews with random people, and he asked this this black dude. He's like, "Can a white guy get that pass or something?" And then this white dude comes in and he just says it hardcore, Ooh. and then the video cuts out. You know that guy got fucked up after <laughs> that video, bro. Hundred percent. Hey, on your free times and shit, what kind of do you watch shows? You play video games? What do you like to do on your free time? 
Watch porn. I do. I like play some video games, man. Um, you know, I try to. I mean, I like to go take my family to the water parks or, you know, if um, they usually take so long to get out of the house, <laughs> bro. So if I can get up and get my clothes on and be like, I'll be right back, I might go, you know, hang out somewhere. And, <laughs> you know, I can't be drinking all the time, but I would. I would drink all the fucking time Fuck. if I could. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's nice booking fights and having fights coming up because then you have something to, like, fucking plan for, something to be disciplined for because – I'm the same way. I don't have really an issue with it, but dude, I fucking could go out and party and hang with the boys every fucking weekend if I if I didn't have shit coming up. Sure, yeah, but that's good. You gotta you gotta tone it down when you got important shit. But I mean, you just be chiefing and working out at the same time. Those are pretty good videos. <laughs> Fuck, I appreciate that. that. Peter Yan's got to be pissed. Peter Yan ain't doing that. What, what do you think about that fight? Honest opinion. No, not offended. I know I've actually watched a lot of a lot of uh, professional fighters picking Peter Yan, and I, I'm not. I don't. I obviously don't fucking get my feelings hurt. It's it's uh it's interesting. What do, what do you think about how that fight plays out? Me versus Peter. Well, I I mean I'm kind of stuck in the middle on it. I do think that you have a good a great chance because you have nothing to lose, and he it seems like um, Peter Yan kind of gets in his own head with stuff sometimes. So I feel like you're definitely a fighter that can be bothering him with the shit that you're doing. Um, he's pretty he's pretty solid, but everywhere. everywhere. You're kickboxing. You keep your distance well, and if you can touch him from the outside, and then catch him with an uppercut or a knee when he tries to grab grab your legs with a takedown or something, you get him some shit like that, man. Yeah, I think you can pull it off. Fucking head bust him. Hey, you do you like to fight like emotional, or have you kind of got away from that and just been pretty good at being emotionless when you fight? Oh man, I don't. You know. I wonder how I was in the MVP fight. I think I don't think I was really emotional, but like one thing MVP did in the fight that kind of pissed me off and made me put more aggression on was like every time the ref came in to separate and re restart, he would push me. Mm -hmm. So after he did that like twice, the ref couldn't even separate us because I was like just trying to get forward whenever the ref came in. I was trying to push him before he pushed me and just go at him. And like, so I guess I'm an emotional fighter, but I use it to my advantage. Yeah, I think someone for you and your style and your chin and your fucking neck, you're just a pit bull made for fighting. Fighting with emotions for you, I almost think is fucking good sometimes. Yeah. What? Yeah, what? it helps when when the fight is like something I'm really like, it was an honor to fight Michael Venom page. So it was like, yeah, I'm, I want to get this motherfucker for me. And then, so if I'm fighting some, but I'm older now in the game where, you know, when you're, you're supposed to win and you're the favorite, like big favorite. I've failed at times like that in my career, but now I feel like I'm ready to be the favorite and uh you know crush a can you know i'm cool with that now i feel like i can do what my job and what i'm supposed to do does that did that circle that fucking that ring did it feel like the smaller ufc cage or the the bigger one i feel like it looks pretty small right did it feel small <laughs> you know you use the ring a little better than i do probably <laughs> um i i definitely i felt the same in the triangle Right. I was in the triangle. I just get just a, a little phone booth. And I'm like, I'm going to stay on you like a magnet, and I'm going to fucking try to hit you. So it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, that, that's fair. I, I I obviously, I fucking prefer that big cage. I love being able to fucking dance around on, on people. But, yeah, fuck, fuck that small cage. Bro, Mike, thanks for coming on, dude. Next time we're in Florida, we got to hang out. Yeah, Mike, really appreciate you. Looking forward to pretty much, dude, anything. Bare knuckle. You go back to MMA. You fucking fight Jake Paul. I'm watching. Appreciate you coming on. For what do you like points. to drink? I like, dude, I'm starting to like tequila because uh, I got a Mexican princess, so I'm basically Mexican now, so I got to stick with that tequila, baby. baby. Tim, Tim, Tim gets baby. scared to drink. Hey, he don't get fucking... a bottle. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, Tim gets, gets scared, scared all day. I try to get Tim to black out, but he never will. <laughs>
Dude, dude, I see him drinking that Mountain Valley over there. Yeah, that's what he, that's what he does down, at the club, baby. too. Fucking looks for the most drunk girl at the club and tries to approach her. Fuck. <laughs> Mikey, we're big fans, bro. Thanks a yes, ton. Yes, sir, Mikey. Appreciate you, brother. Talk, Talk to, you to you soon, bro. Thank you, guys, man. Appreciate it. Yep. Mike's a cool motherfucker. Huh? The recording file will be converted. Yeah, you're okay. good. You can send it. And meeting for all. Sweet. Mike, he'd, he'd be a cool dude to hang out with. Just fuck around, huh? Yeah, we got we, we to party. Go go bar hopping with him a couple times. You I know you got. You know you're good. I know I'm fucking good. If I'm if I'm drinking with Mike Perry, I'm, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking. He'll until knock someone, out anyone. Until someone comes with a gun, like, fucking oh, you put one on your forehead. dude. Don't say that shit, dude. Uh, but dude, yeah, what a cool motherfucker. I'm I'm pumped for his next fight, whoever the fuck it is. Every time he gets booked, I'm I'm watching that shit. Yeah, he's a, he's just a fucking he's a fighter mm -hmm. at heart. Uh yeah, there's so many interesting matchups he could have had in the UFC. He's just up so so up and down with his wins and losses, but every what? time he fought was fucking entertainment. Oh yeah. Even well what does Wikipedia said too? He bounced around from different schools, Michigan and Florida. He said he was one of maybe ten white kids in the whole school, so he was bullied a lot just for being white. It was the same thing at other schools. I wouldn't back down, so I'd get into fights. The instability instability led him to path of drugs, house arrest, and probation violation in jail. Perry started training boxing at the age of 11. Upon his release from jail for burglary, he got a job as a trainer at the UFC gym. His work as a trainer and trainer led to his career as a fighter. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, that have, was... So he's got one more of the bare knuckle. I wonder who can they're, they're going to bring him in for. Imagine him and uh, Joe Riggs, healthy Joe Riggs, <sighs> a trained Joe Riggs, too. That'd be a fucking banger That's of a fight. That's scary. Probably. I don't know. I, dude, I legit don't know if I could watch that. Yeah, they'd like, batter like each other. Oh. It's crazy with Joe Riggs, too. Um, you listen to the recap? Yeah. He blew his hand off, so he wears a small glove on his left hand and the <laughs> large on his right because his hand. Dude, that fucking, yeah. If you guys haven't watched that, the recap with uh, Joe Riggs and Tim is is super entertaining. He's just a character, dude. <laughs> Literally One a real life character. character e people I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. He's got some fucking stories, too, dude. Well, yeah, you guys on the fight, Master. Fuck that, dude. I, I forgot he won that shit. Yeah, bro, and it was miserable. Like Ooh. he had to make weight every ten days, and he'd blow up to two hundred after every single fight. Like, <sighs> and not even lying. Yeah, like two hundred, and then he'd have to go down to one seventy, two hundred, one seventy. That's why he was in the hospital for weeks after something happened, something failed on him, I'm sure. and he blew up to like two fifteen, two twenty, just swollen from his ankles. He wouldn't even let me see him. God, dude, that made, that just brings it back to that patty. I feel like, and I think Patty said that too. He said once he fights, starts fighting better competition, then he'll start kind of getting it under, under control. And I, and I think that's true. But dude, that is, it'll age you quick. Well, it'll age you quick, and it's like I know when I'm, I never really get fat ever. But when I, even when I'm bigger, it's like I can't train. I mean, I still can, and I feel stronger at that weight. But it's not realistic. Like it's not. Like I'm not I'm not gonna be 159 in the cage ever. You know I, I get in the cage yeah. 155, 154, whatever. So it's just it's it's not good. And I, yeah, I wonder if it's just like the knowledge of diet and the knowledge of inflammation in your body that I guess hanging out with the the people you're hanging out with. I guess. Well, he's he probably never was really making a ton of money. Now he's making good money. He's traveling to the United States. He's going to L.A. Eating all this. Like all those opportunities. I love watching him eat those. I know. I too. Just chomps, bro. It's fucking. I would funny. love to go eat with them. Yeah. I, I mean, would... I don't know. Paulo versus uh, Patty. Did you see that got announced? Ice yep. cream eating competition. That'll be good. We're going to get Paulo on here. He's so fucking funny, dude. I love how confident he is in his English. Some people that aren't like good at English, they won't like talk or won't try. But Paulo will just talk, even if he like it just doesn't say the right shit. Yeah. Like, he just talks. What uh? Do you guys probably talked about on the um Bro Malley show a lot? But your first commentating experience, everyone I didn't get to listen to it, but everyone was like, "Dude, that was like, you surprised people because everyone I think expected you to sound like a fucking tard." But really, um, yeah, I wasn't nervous for it. I was, I mean, a little bit. I was like, "Huh, I wonder how this will go." It's like, I don't know. It it was, it was super. Yeah, we talked a little bit on the Bro Malley, but it was super interesting because I walked into the meeting. It was Laura Sanko, um, DC. Uh, one, two, the ring announcer, like four or five other people. That it, it's like go, a lot of work goes into every single fight. They have like so much information on every guy, and they have a meeting about it, and they talk about points you can talk. And it, it was super interesting for me commentating. I feel like 
it was fun. I it, it was it was it was good. Um, people, it wasn't necessarily like, all right, let's see if I could do this for my career in the future. It wasn't really like that. But I mean, if it shows you how good John Anik is, dude, John he's like Anik, an ex, like yeah. a black belt at it. Yeah, John Anik's fucking yeah. He's, he's next level at it. it. It was fun though. I could I, I could definitely see myself doing it again. I can't believe the guys that do the pay per view. I guess any main card go from three p.m. to ten p.m. Oh, it's I'm insane. like holy. So when shit. you guys did the little uh, meeting where you're all around the table, there was probably what seven or eighty around a yeah. table. What did you guys talk about at the meeting? It was the meeting right before the event started. So you go through each fight. They say, okay, we're gonna have this fight, and then it's gonna cut to this, and then it's gonna cut to that, and then Laura Sanko, you're gonna take the top of this one. And then Laura will ask DC, and then uh, just kind of free ball, whatever. And then Dan's going to ask Sugar, like, how does it feel to be back? And then we're going to cut to this fight. So it's just, it's super organized. Oh. Like, for the, like, down to the minutes. Mm. And then you, so when you have the headset on, you can, it, which was tricky because if you're talking, hey, guys, okay, look, and then you're hearing someone else in the mic saying, all right, five seconds, you got to be done, like, some. So it, it was interesting. Oh, so you have one earpiece in and one no, out. No, you have you just like this, but you're talking, so you can hear yourself, you can hear every the other people. But then there's also someone talking to you, saying right, five, four, Dang. but you still got to keep talking. Huh? I bet that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it it was. I was hope it, I was hoping my fight went a little bit longer because I was having a good time and it was good experience and it was just kind of you, you felt know, comfortable. Once I you felt were comfortable cruising. and I felt like I, I could have hit a couple good one liners, but also it's like it, it's different. You're like this is live, like. It was funny. A lot of people were saying DC looked just like upset that I was there. I didn't get that vibe. DC, every time we've been together, it's like, "What's up, brother?" It's like, yeah, everyone it's good. was saying that he looked like what the like. Why this is kid's, he here? You know, this kid's good or something. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't feel any weird vibes from DC. I felt like he, he was he, he was, was stomp, funny. stomp around backstage, just like and he walked by me. He's like, "I'm so fucking tired." Well, there was an op- there was an open monster can, a five hour energy, and like another <laughs> energy bar thing. It's so crazy to me how. I just have my sleep, like caffeine, not past noon, like have my diet, have everything just dialed in. And then some people just fucking. Well, it's different though, dude, when you do it, you're going to do it your, for another 10 years or whatever. And then you don't have to do it. So yeah, it's but like, then yeah. I get anxiety and I'm like, oh, I know why I feel like this. Yeah. I am going to bed at midnight and I'm fucking drinking. Yeah. Eating I shit and stuff. I'm just uh, thankful we learned all this shit when we did. Oh, bro. It's. Our lives wouldn't be where we're at. You'd probably be injured. I what 100. I understand why people are anxious. People they say they're like we're, we're people dealing with depression and anxiety. Too. It's like yeah, because no one eats right, no one sleeps right, no one drinks the right kind of water, no one treats themselves right. Of course, you're gonna have these side effects from vaping fucking all day. And then they're and then they're, they're talking about on that podcast too how your brain's wired for problems. That's how yep. a human brain is. And then when you don't have any problems create them. you you get bored so you try to create them and then you start having this anxiety because you have you have nothing to so it's like not having any problems so creating that uncomfortableness for yourself like with the cold plunge or go push yourself on a workout how fucking important that shit is dude well after my hard hard workouts it's like like if say i go to brandon's we have a hard we end on a hard push my heart rate hit 185 190 whatever it is and then we down regulate get our heart rate down start exhaling long <sighs> I feel like that's the easy that that for me is the easiest time to become more to meditate to be quiet the mind after your heart rate spikes and now you're coming down it's easier to psycho you're not thinking about all this other shit yeah it's that dopamine release you get from that effort oh uh what um I mean I saw on Brandon's little watch your heart rate was getting 196 sparring it hit it hit 202 202 I think so I wonder what point in the in the round was when you took the back. Yeah, I don't know. Let me see. I think I can look at my. It's last, pretty fucking uh, impressive. Two oh two, dude. My shit might pop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, that, I mean, I basically did two rounds, um, eight weeks out, which is pretty fucking crazy right now. Like, yeah, two oh two is my heart rate max. Um, did you watch the Nate Diaz vid where he's smoking and uh, and you saw in the back? Oh yeah, dude. Because every time you saw us there, if I'm like have my phone out, they're like, don't get on camera, don't like they f- a freak about it. You saw that guy like trying yeah. to hide. I wonder if Nate got in any trouble from that. Or what? But it's like, dude, the USADA people, they're nice. Every time I've met a USADA, they're so nice. But they're fucking annoying. In what way? Because, like, I don't want to, like, I don't want someone at my house right now. Like, I'm, it's 7 a.m. Elena's sleeping. The dogs are barking. Elena's up. I have to shit. And they want me to piss. Are they I don't have to pushy piss. or? No, they're not. Like, they're always nice. Every USADA people, person I've met is super nice. It's just mm. fucking annoying. 
Yeah, fuck, I bet. Like, the, I bet Nate probably just took a piss and he's just hanging with the boys, and now this guy's just sitting there. Well, that one like, kid that was starting shit at the club was behind him, you see? That little, uh, that shrimp. Yeah, that little dork. I don't get how that Adriano Marias is so fucking huge at 125. Well, dude, you dude. gotta remember, Demetrius is not. 5'4". No. 5'3"-ish. Probably. I mean, he does look big for a 25er, but I think that makes him look huge. I'm pissed he didn't want to, I mean, that we didn't get a train session in with him. When he was here, maybe he'll come back. I'm I sure messaged him Insta and said, "Yo, good shit. That was sick." Um, but uh, yeah, we'll see what he says. Yeah, that'd be sweet if he come in, come in and train. That's such a fast little fucker, dude. It's yeah, little... he looks like he's just got great cardio too. You uh, you shot Bozzy a message? Yeah, cause I was just vibing with him, fucking listening to some music, and I was just like, you know, I'm gonna message him and say, "Yo, I b- love your music," mm-hmm. cause I, I think you showed me him maybe a while back, a while yeah. ago, and I was. I, I throw Bozzy on like after training session. I'm driving home. You're looking for Fair a calmer enough. chill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, God, I can't match his pitch. I try. See, I feel like I can do decent Bozzy? with that pitch. No. <clears throat> oh, we could probably get him on the pod. Well, I messaged him and said, yo, love your music. He's like, oh, shit, big fan. Uh, he lives in LA, so we should kick it. I said after. Damn, uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so. But Bo- yeah. I can't match that pitch. I tried. I, can't, I'm, I just can't do it. Uh, Kevin, well, we're going to do it. I think next week we're going to bring our AirPods. You're going to pick a little 30 second song, 30 second song to try to see whose voice. I'm going to, I'm going to have to do Russ just cause it's the only one I've been, I listened to more, more Russ. Than you anything. can match his shit. No, I can't, but I can sound decent. Hmm. Um, what was it? Oh yeah. The little baby documentary on Amazon is fucking good. Oh, yeah, I watched Did it. you watch that shit? Yeah, yeah, I watched Bro. It. He didn't even, he was hustling. He was making, I guess, millions, just, just drug dealing, selling drugs. And then, uh, even like 2016, he started rapping, something like that. Yeah, it was weird. Like he he's only been rapping for like probably five years max. And he's now. the big, he's probably one of the biggest rappers in the world right now. And he just went from not good to one of the best, bro. When they would play those songs in in a row like that, and I would, it, was hard, it was hard for me to go to bed last night. Cause they I, get you hyped. I get, I want to be a rapper so bad. You've always been into that shit. I just well, I think it's performing. Just when there's one person performing and there's crowd just going crazy but not, and they're you, but you like spitting. watching freestyles and when freestyles, there's not a crowd yeah i like it, music it's crazy when i mean is your can you learn to do that is your brain just well, dude, wired that way yeah i wonder little yeah. baby literally sucked he said and like wasn't good hated it and then literally yeah. two years he had he was dropping some of the sickest shit out yeah, i wonder if crazy. you had a songwriter you had a, a, a rap writer and then you had the the person who makes the sickest beats for everyone like uh who knows, Jack Harlow, whoever makes yeah. the sweetest beats. Well, it's crazy, too, because if you hear him just rapping like without auto-tune, no music, it's like it doesn't sound that good. It's like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's weird. So a lot know. of people aren't good singers. There's auto-tune, but also it's just a fucking vibe. And the lyrics. His lyrics are next level. Yeah, really? I, I like him a lot, too, after, the, after that doc. It's crazy, though. You see Young Thug and Gunner, yeah. all his friends are locked up right now. I know. And I wonder then, if he's next. In I, the uh, pen? Why? Why? Drug dealing, some drug shit, yeah. Coke and shit, or yeah. drug dealing. Wait, dude, that shit got me fired up. I had a hard time sleeping after Leon vs. Camaro too. Why don't you write yourself a little? Uh, why don't you? Write I, a dude, I've <laughs> tried rapping. I've tried freestyle. I've no, tried just writing. writing. Oh, I've you tried. have. I just can't. I just. I don't know. It's almost like you got to find your own like own what style, style uh, is your <laughs> rap, <little> baby. <laughs> That'd be sick. Well, yeah. What style is it? Because a lot of them literally, it sounds like they're just talking, and there's a sick beat behind it. Dude, if you if you look up, I've been listening to Lil Baby for a couple of years now. Like, I like looking up the lyrics when they're uh, I like E40's on, lyrics. <laughs> lyrics, my favorite. Yeah, but if you look up on or on uh, Spotify, they have the lyrics on there. Shit's so fire. Did you guys see uh, Connor's story? Everybody's talking about it. Were you getting a beach? Yeah. That was no. sweet. On the yacht. Damn. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. That's what I'm talking about, big. Let's go. I know. I know. Um, how cool of a guy was Leon? Yeah, Leon was super cool. Just but he seemed very relaxed or very chilled. He like, just he seemed like, like a very the calm person. M- fucking most normal, laid back dude. Super yeah. calm. Even after like that, like there wasn't like this crazy energy. Like he was walking around like he was the man. He's like, yeah, that was sweet. Yeah, he was just a fucking cool. Like, dude. He just knocked out Kamaro. Like yeah, I'm, yeah, that was fucking cool. He's, uh, he's pretty. Habib big. was talking about how special of a man. It takes to come back from getting KO'd like that. Mm. Like how many mental battles you're gonna have to go through, and it takes a special human 
to come back. And people don't understand that. They think, oh, Kamaro's back. He's going to be back just like the same. He's like, you don't know what battles are going on in the head. I would, I'd, I'd like to say, or I'd like to think Kamaro, to get to the level he got to, being champ for that long, defending it that many times, he has the tools and the mental capacity and the mental awareness to be able to say, like, it's all about perspective. Like, dude, I literally was winning that fight. I got caught, made a yep. mistake. Yeah. Like, that's it. Nothing else to it. Mm-hmm. Like, you should, he probably went into that fight. Maybe, maybe he didn't go and went into the fight, like, knowing that's a possibility. If you go into it thinking there's no way I can ever get, and then get knocked out, maybe that's different. You I know, go into he, every fight. Like, it's a possibility. Yeah. He was talking about that, too. He's like, Leon scares me. I know how good he is. I know how sharp he is. Like, yeah. God, and Whitman was telling him after that third round. No, mis- no, fourth, no mistakes. Just stay disciplined. Yep, stay fucking that. disciplined. Stay disciplined. And it didn't even, like, it wasn't even that undisciplined. Like, yeah, he slipped a little, like, obviously slipped right into a head kick, but it's like, it wasn't like a big slip or a big fuck up. It, he just kind of was what like fighting is. Closing, yeah, fuck, dude. Yeah, fight, fighting's the craziest fucking sport. Yeah, Leon said he uh been having some fun going out, going to the club party with the boys. But he's having a good time. But you, but you said his last loss was. I think his last loss was his first loss to Kamaru Usman, which, which is, is absolutely fucking insane. A hundred percent, dude. You see the boys, Nelk boy, Steiny, fucking Steve, or no, Steve, Steve Facetime me the other night. Oh, what he said? He was with kicking it with six. Um. I, it was dude, his birthday. Steve's the man, and he's our boy. But dude, Celine is so fucking hot. Selena. Selena. Is her name Celine or Selena? I think it's Celine, maybe. His girl. Steve, <laughs> for you, brother. Like, good job. Jesus, the, it's that crazy. rack. Yeah, she got a great rack. It's crazy how uh, they've been together for so, like since high school. Yeah, that's awesome. what's fucking sweet. It's rare to find like because imagine if they weren't together. Like for a, him to find a girl that likes. It's hard. I mean. You don't know how genuine girls are. They're going to fucking like you because you have a blue check mark. It's fucking crazy how good girls are about that, too. Because, like, you first meet a chick and you're like, wow, man, she's just she's so great. cool. She, her energy's great. She's just. And then you picture it as something. Then you hang out with her one or two t- more times. You're like, ah. Bro, I, I don't see any red flags. If I, if I meet a chick and she's hot, she's cool. She's the I'm best. like, God, she's great, man. She's <laughs> a good girl. You're a virgin, huh? I know it. You're a virgin. <laughs> That's you don't want to fuck anyone with me. Yeah, so, yeah, that was his last loss, was Usman, and then all those. And he beat Albert Tumayev, Tumenamav, uh, oh. Vincente Luke, Brian Barberina, Peter Sabata, Donald Cerrone, Gunnar Nelson, Hoffa Dos Sanjos, Bilal, Nate Diaz. Fuck, bro. Yeah. And he, like, what a smart decision to say, no, I'm waiting for the title shot. I'm not going to fuck, fucking fight Kamzat. I'm not going to fight any of these motherfuckers. Yeah. I'm waiting for the title shot. That was smart. Pound for pound, head shot, dead. I'm gonna. I need to say my. That just makes the welterweight division so much more exciting. I feel like, like I'm a fan of Kamaru, obviously, but dude, that that's fucking yeah. sweet. Now that opens up so many sick fights. Well, Gilbert versus Jorge, I think, is what's happening next, which is interesting. So if Gilbert wins, Gilbert versus Leon. If Jorge wins, Jorge but what versus if, Leon. What if Calms out goes and just fucking smokes Nate in two minutes? Just oh yeah, beats his face in. That. Fuck, dude, that's a fight I want to see. Has I want to see anyone how... ever beat Nate's face in in two minutes. Nate's never been finished. Wait, you got finished by Josh Thompson, right? Mazadal too. Oh yeah, that was doctor stoppage. And Warlike trying to say no, that was com- that was competitive, competitive fight. <laughs> Warlike, he's so fucking stupid sometimes, but he does <laughs> he does call he does he does his research and does, does know about a lot of shit. Except for that fight was pretty. Jorge versus Nate was not. Competitive. I felt bad for Nate on that fight. I was like, Ugh. dude, but watching watching Nate and Nick, I was watching some of Nate's vlogs. Those motherfuckers are so badass. Nick was probably my favorite fighter for a long time. I loved his fucking, just his style of boxing, the way he hits the body. The way those guys train, too, they're not physical specimens. They just got this crazy heart and crazy good chins, and they good do work probably ethic. train hard, too. But it's hard not to be fans of those guys. Yeah, I rewatched Nate versus Leon yesterday. Le- Leon's so fucking sharp, dude. And then Nate hits him with that one, two, two, two in the fifth with like a minute and a half, and... Leon's on, but that was that was a pretty fun fight to watch. Was it? Yeah, Nate's putting his hands on his knees, showing him his ass, and then fucking just does a, throws a one two. Just looking, it's just funny. I've been watching. Uh, what other fight did I just rewatch? Gilbert versus uh, Hamza. That fight was entertaining. Dude. I saw that one pop up. You Fuck, should I was rewatch, re-watch it. it. You should. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's good. Yeah, I remember first watching. Like God, Gilbert could have won that. Going to the cards, but then I have to rewatch. And I was like, Hamza was walking. Yeah, down. Strickland was like, dude, Hamza doesn't even Sean Strickland saw. doesn't even need to train for this fight. Yeah, I saw he he was talking about Jared Cannonier. Like I might get knocked out, or I might 
TKO him. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I was talking to Jared yesterday, and Jared seems in a good mindset for it. He's fucking pumped. He knows what he needs to do. Five rounds with that, too, with Jared Cannonier. Yeah. I think he's going to do it. Should we get Sean Strickland on the pod? Yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, he don't like me, dude. I, he probably does not not like you. Maybe he's got social anxiety, and he just didn't know. To, uh, why you got the iron? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. He's good. We guy. should get Anik on the pod too, dude. dude that would John be sweet. Anik. Yeah, that motherfucker. That motherfucker's. He's like fun to listen to. And probably Andrew Tate would like to come on too and, and yeah. give him. Give I don't know how to hit story. him up anymore. You don't oh, have yeah. IG. Literally, Stop. there's no. What, what's that new one they're talking about that's coming out? That's uh, Rumble. Rumble. Yeah, that might be a good one. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's like a no, yeah. It's another platform. Uh, it's interesting. Yeah, Connor getting a beach on his fucking yacht. What is cool. there a vi- video of that? Mm-hmm. I want to see that shit. Not like that. No Cheeto, gay shit. Cheeto but. says Connor all about business now into porn. Proper head. Proper head. I don't get it. Oh, proper twelve. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. Tony Ferguson versus Ling Jingling. Kind of weird they made that fight. Everyone's saying, why the fuck do you put one seventy Nate versus one and one seventy Tony, but not against each other? And then have, yeah, Nate, and then have uh, someone else fight Humza. Nate versus Tony it would be fucking sick. But then Nate wins, and then he asks for some crazy amount of money. Or title shot. Like, oh, yeah, this is his last fight. This is going to be interesting. Oh, yeah, well, let's, well, might as well talk about the KSI versus two people uh, the other night. Did you watch any of that? Watch no, highlights or anything? I didn't. The whole the whole concept kind of seemed weird to me. I think the pro boxer he fought was two and five, and then the other influencer he fought just looked fat and out of shape. It was... In in KSI looked like he put in a lot of work. Um, I don't know. It was just it, it's just I, I don't know. It wasn't. Did you good. think it was fake? No, <clears throat> I've seen a clip of where the other guy fell and he didn't even get hit. He I think he was. Fell. I think he just that scared. Oh, I don't really? think it was fake at all. I think he was just like that scared and just like didn't want to be in there. And it was if, it was embarrassing. If he was dude. if he was gonna fight two guys in one night, that's what he's got to do is find someone who's gonna be scared of that moment and want to fall down. Well, I think he had to fought the first guy like super early in the night, and then the second fight at the end, like that swarms two. guy three three threes fucking swarms just looked fat out of shape. Was like turning his back, just looked like shit, like huh? spinning in circles. I, I dude. I want to know who the opponent Jake Paul is talking about. Imagine if it is KSI. That would be sweet. KSI didn't even call him out. KSI called out. He called out uh, Andrew Tate. Called out um, that um, the guy that knocked out Face Temper something Slim or something. Who else did he call out? He called out a lot of people. He didn't call out Jake Paul though. Like this, yeah, well, that guy's smart. that guy's a pro boxer. That's that's where they're promoting. KSI versus uh, whatever that guy is said. Uh, Damn. Pro boxer. Yeah. So wasn't wasn't super impressive. Kind of watched a little bit here and there. Uh, new the new rebirth map. I mean, I guess it's the same map, but uh, still, thank God it's back. God, I know. Are you gonna play later? Damn. So KSI beat Logan. Look at how much smaller he is than Logan. I think it was a close fight. I'm oh. su- I'm still surprised, dude. Because when I I'm, I was very impressed with Logan on the Floyd fight. Just not oh, even the, sure. just like his athleticism. His jab is sneaky. I feel like Logan could be a really good boxer. He could be good at whatever he wanted to be yeah. good at. You watch him in the WWE, how athletic he is. He's a freak. Yeah. God, it would be sick if he just like took it serious like Jake and started boxing some of these guys. Th- yeah. That shit's entertaining to me. More entertaining than some shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Or if they were like, Ordain was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to give Logan one fight in the UFC against P- Patty at 185. Because Patty would probably do it. Fuck, that would be funny. Uh, Do we leave? I have a little count on my phone. We leave for Abu Dhabi in 39 days. Fuck. Hopefully I'm not blind. September 8th, go for my eye surgery. Oh. That's going to be here before you know it, though, that leaving for Abu It's weird because, like, I have – usually it's like, okay, fight week, and then the fight's five, six days later now. But we're leaving so much earlier, it's, it's throwing me off. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Well, everyone's saying you can get gold out there cheap, and then my boy Nick was saying go to the Rolex store there. They have a lot of rare Rolexes. But then I'm going to be scared to buy that shit because I don't know if you can bring it back. I know. My dad was saying it should be no ish. I'm not going to bring any watches or nothing, though, because they said you need paperwork, receipts, all that if you're going to bring that. Put or, it in your butt. Or they'll confiscate it. I could just stuff it in the butt. That'd be hot. Uh, did yeah. You guys, did you guys see, uh, remember the guy Jake was supposed to fight? He's fighting. Oh, he's Belfort now. Haseem Rahman. 
or yeah. whatever. He's fighting Vitor. Yeah, I saw oh, that. Oh, damn. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, all the boys are going to be fucking fucking out in uh, in uh, Abu Dhabi. That's going to be epic, going to be legendary. I love it. I was watching uh I was watching Conor versus Aldo predictions. Uh, we're in UFC fan. Every, everyone. Oh, Aldo. 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 And then Conor goes out and fucking starts with him. And I was rewatch I was watching the well, a video on YouTube of fans or uh, fighters predict me versus Peter and everyone's like Peter, 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 Peter. I was like, Oh and I was shadow boxing like before training, it was fire. Yeah, I mean fuck, bro. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be fucking crazy. It's gonna be here before oh, you just goddamn walk out know of that it. cage and just I'm gonna be walking <sighs> back to the locker room and then uh Islam Charles is about to go at Whoa, it. Oh, I'm gonna give you my dick socks. Aljamain TJ. That's some Abu Dhabi and chick. Mm-hmm. Oh, jokes, jokes, jokes. It's crazy how much the Contender Series has gotten uh, pimped out. Yeah, like it's a yeah. serious show now compared to when we fought. Holy shit, that was we, we were fucking warming up in a warehouse. It was hot. And there was it was weird. It was mm-hmm. definitely different. Oh, remind me, I want to show you this video I made. I don't know if it's funny or not. If I need to redo it, so you gotta let me know. Oh, oh, that arm just break. Little Americana action. That's a fucking Gamora, wasn't it? Or no? So have you ever been with a black chick or no? Um, dude, I don't. No, I've never been with just like a beautiful black woman. I would love to though. If there's any beautiful black woman watching this, really? Yeah. What about you? Shoot your message. Yeah, shoot your message. I have. I never intercourse. Never sexual intercourse. You just. You gotta lick her butt. Just got a little oh. Beach, 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 beach. oh yeah, and you busted her mouth, and she was making out with your friend, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right after. <laughs> Sorry about that, brother. Uh, go ahead, call him. Give him a shout out. No, she was a virgin too. <laughs> Give him a shout out. <laughs> oh god, that would. Oh my god, that would suck. Some uh, yeah. So we got some shit going on. You know what I mean? Some shit going on. Oh, are you gaming today or what, bud? Are we gaming? Are we doing a little barbecue or what? I'm down to game. I'm down to. I don't know. I might go to. Co- Dude, I haven't been to Costco in so long. Dude, don't go. Is it bad? Especially on a Sunday. I'm like, why the fuck did That's, I come here? I bro? literally told Danny that. Because I, I was like, we should go to Costco. And then I was like, fuck, maybe we shouldn't go on a Sunday. Dude, hell no. Is it well, hell? The last sun, or I mean, three Sundays ago, we went. We're like, why the fuck did we so, come here? It's just so packed. So stupid packed. Yeah. It's just like a rat race, dude. Fuck that. Yeah. We could go make some good. You, is your grill working or not? Should be. Is it? Should be. Move Schmitter and the boys in yesterday. Yeah, Schmitty, uh I was like, yeah, yeah. Schmitty, he's a goofball. I was like, where did you get this tough the needle bed? I have tough the needle bed. I didn't think it was mine. And then he's like, oh, yeah. And then he texted me. He's like, hey, champ, that's yours. I was like, oh, shit. I, I, was, I thought he just had a tough the needle bed. He took my bed from my apartment. Oh. And my desk. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's okay. Yeah, 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 that's I'm not worried about it. But maybe I do want that desk back, though. Because I, I still have my apartment for four months. And then I'm going to have my dad. and My dad's coming down soon. Oh, to stay, yeah, yeah. stay for a little bit. Yeah, my dad, and then my aunt Barbie, she's coming down too. Yeah, have her hit me up. <laughs> what, Barbie? It's fine. Um, yeah, probably not, bud. All right. You've been uh oh Christian or Sono's coming down soon. Christian That'll be boy. good to get him on the pod. Talk about him when he beat his girl. Yeah, yeah. I'm kidding. He did it. He did yeah, it. No, he, he did it. He did. He did her once. He yeah, her once. It was once. God, dude, I'm ready to go party with the boys. Are you? Fuck, I, I haven't been craving to party. I'm I've been a craving bit. to actually train a little bit. I've been oh, missing that. Oh, fuck, I'm sure. How, when was the last time you got to do jiu-jitsu? Five weeks? Six weeks? Six. Six weeks ago? Yeah. What happened here? Clay, Clay Guida? Guida and Alex Caceres, they grappled, and it was a draw. Oh, wow. It's mm-hmm. interesting. So, All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys. Episode two hundred and two. We're coming, dude. We're gonna. You guys, let us know who else you guys want us to get on. We're gonna be working on guests. I, I enjoy doing those zooms. I think we kind of talked about that. Um, I can't reach. Uh, via hemp, ladies and gentlemen. This is our. These are our favorite gummies. Flow state. This look at these flow state ones have CBG mm. and CBD in them. Flow through your day, energize and focus. This blend of CBG and broad spectrum CBD is designed to help increase performance while providing all the holistic benefits. They have all types of shit, and they'll ship them straight to your house. Code capital TMS. The link's in the bio, 10% off, and they'll send you a free pack of gummies. But seriously, try these, nibble on them, stay away from the fucking pills. Yeah, come on, guys. The pills, the fucking... Dude, the doctor prescribed me prednisone for my shoulder because he's like, there's just so much inflammation going on there. And the headache that shit gives me, dude. It was the pill, you think? 
yeah, because I looked up the side effects of that drug, and it's like a heavy dose, and they said the side effects were bad. Damn, and pregnant like, zone, huh? Yeah. So gummies, they're the way to go. Check them out. Via Hemp Company. Yum, yum, yum. 100%. Bye. Bye.